In the previous tutorial, we saw the single table inheritance strategy provided by Hibernate, and we learned that that's the default strategy that uh, Hibernate goes for if you do not specify any inheritance configuration. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, another type of inheritance strategy that uh, we can configure, and uh, this strategy is called the table per class strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a separate table for each of the classes that we need to persist. So here, a vehicle is going to be a separate table, a two-wheeler is going to be a separate table, and a four-wheeler is going to be a separate table. Um, it is not as straightforward as it seems. There are a few uh, things that we need to consider. So let's let's try to implement this. Let me remove this discriminator column. We don't need the discriminator column if we are uh, implementing a table per class strategy. The whole reason why the discriminator column existed in the single table strategy is because uh, all the all the objects of three different classes were being dumped into the same table. So if three different objects are in the same table, we need a way to isolate different objects. Say, for example, I need to get only the two-wheeler objects from the table. What would I do? I would just use the discriminator column to differentiate the two-wheeler objects from the other objects. So what I would do is if I have a, you know, a discriminator value as bike for two-wheeler objects, so I would say select everything from this vehicle table where the discriminator column vehicle type equals bike. So that's the way in which I can pull up the data for the particular class that I have in mind. And uh, that's the reason why the discriminator column was there in order to identify uh, your records which are there because of a particular object or a particular class. Now, if I have separate tables for each of these classes, I would no longer need the discriminator because it's fairly straightforward. If I need a two-wheeler object, I would go to the two-wheeler table. If I need a four-wheeler object, I'd go to the four-wheeler table. So there's no need for a discriminator if we have a table per class strategy. So let's change this inheritance type to a table per class strategy. Okay, so this is all that's needed actually. Let me remove the discriminator from these two entities as well. And save. Let me save this parent class as well. Now, this is all that's required. Again, Hibernate does a lot of things, uh, you know, it, it does a lot of default actions, we don't have to configure each and everything. So let's run this and see what's happening. So again, what we have done is we have marked the parent class as an entity, and we have defined the inheritance strategy as table per class. And then of course, we have marked the child classes also as entities. So both of these have been marked as entities. Now in my main method, I have uh, a vehicle object, I have a two wheeler object, and I have a four wheeler object, and I'm saving all the three of them. Now let's see how hibernate persist it this time with a table per class strategy. So let's run this. So here you can see it is inserting uh, three records here. One is it's doing an insert to vehicle, it's doing an insert to two wheeler, and it's doing an insert into four wheeler. Let's uh, query the database and see how the tables look like. I mean, the vehicle, it just has the vehicle ID and the vehicle name, which is simple enough. We have, um, we only have these two um, properties for the vehicle class. So you have the vehicle ID, and you have the vehicle name. So it's saving only those values because uh, our vehicle object that we have created has just the ID and the name. So it's saving only those two values. Now. Uh, let's try querying the other uh, table here. Two wheeler. Again, it's the name of the class itself. So let's try querying the two wheeler table. Okay, so here we have the vehicle ID, the vehicle name, and the steering handle. Note that the two-wheeler class has only the steering handle declared in the class. The ID and the name are things that it gets due to its inheritance. Now, see, here we have the ID and the name, 
and uh, here we have a generated value for the ID. So not only does the two-wheeler class inherit the ID and the name properties, it also inherits this generated value annotation. It's almost as if you have the ID and the name properties here, and you also have the generated value annotation here. So Hibernate has generated the ID. It has the vehicle ID and the vehicle names. So it's generated this ID as well. And the property of the class, the steering handle, has also been added. So the two-wheeler has these three columns. Now let's have a look at the four-wheeler. It's again similar. Even this inherits the ID and the name, and of course it also inherits the generated value annotation. So Hibernate is generating the key for this class as well, and then it has the property of the class itself. So the points here to note are this. First of all, it's having a separate table for each of the classes. So no matter how many uh, inheritance levels are there, each class has its own table. Secondly, the parent class's properties are inherited and they form separate columns even in the child tables. So since it's inheriting, inheriting the properties and since it might have values in those properties, what Hibernate does is it creates columns for the parent member variables as well in the child tables. The third thing is the annotation for the ID. See here we have a vehicle ID and we are marking it as a generated value. So this generated value of the parent class is also inherited to the child classes. So even the child classes will have an ID which is generated by Hibernate and uh, those IDs are being populated in the tables as well. So the uh, advantage of this method is that you don't need a discriminator to identify what type of object it is. A two-wheeler table has only two-wheeler objects and a four-wheeler table has only four-wheeler objects. So it's easier to identify what is the source of the data, what object it came from. And the second thing is, it is in a normalized form. You don't have extra columns which do not have data. Say in the single table strategy, I have, uh, you know, I have inherited the vehicle class into a two-wheeler and a four-wheeler, say, but I only have two objects in the two-wheeler and four-wheeler uh, class, and all my objects are from the vehicle class. In that case, you have two columns that are null for most of the records in the table. So this is actually not very efficient when it comes to database uh, design and it is not in a normalized format. So this is avoided if you have the separate table, um, table per class strategy. So each table has from a different class, each inherited class has its own table and uh, it's it, you don't have any records where the columns have uh, null values just because it's not, it's not applicable to that particular uh, class. Every table has only the properties that it needs and it does not inherit any blank columns because some other child has implemented some other columns. So that way it's more efficient when it comes to, uh, you know, it's a more elegant way of designing uh, tables. And this is something that you would normally do if you were uh, designing tables for these uh, objects where you're not using hibernate this is how you would do it you would normally not do the single table strategy if you are not using hibernate because it's not really very efficient but uh, you know the single table strategy is a default and the table per class is something that you can implement if you want this kind of a design so in the next tutorial we're going to look at the third way in which we can implement inheritance